Hello guys, uh, welcome back. So we'll be doing a problem from past year ISI. It's problem based on counting and classical probability. Cla counting is of course, combinatorics is a part of classical probability. Um, so this problem is an interesting um, concept, okay, regarding a permutation. And that's where the exciting, um, underlying excitement of any student should lie. They discover the a beautiful theory under any problem. So we will discover that and we'll see how we can use that idea to solve this problem uh, to the very depth of it. So um, so the problem is asked that, uh, you know, I hope you know it's a bijection, a bijection uh, is a one and onto function from a domain to the range. So F is a set of all bijections on the set S to S, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, such that F of F of I is not equal to I. That means, let's say one, so we will do an example right now on the whiteboard. Uh, it's asked that how many such bijections are there such that F of F of I is not equal to I. So we will switch first understand by doing some examples and we will see interesting point and theory underlying any permute, any, any bijection. In, in essentially any bijection here will be a permutation. So let's get started guys. Let me share the screen. So it's so after uh, uh, the set is one, two, three, four, five, six, it's going to this own set, this function, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's a bijection. So each function has a unique output and it's onto one. So therefore, it must be a permutation, okay? It's like one example of such bijection is, let's say this is going to two, two is going to one, three is going to five, four is going to three, five is going to four and six is going to six. Or let's say five is going to six and six is going to four. So you can easily observe that it's a permutation. Okay, it's a permutation. One is going to, so initially it was one, two, three, four, five, six. The output turns out to be one goes to two, two goes to one, three goes to five, four goes to three, five goes to six and six goes to five. So the permutation of this all, the you know, output is a permutation. The question therefore asks that how many such permutations are there? Permutations such that f of f of i is not equal to i. Now what does this mean? f of f of i is not equal to i. Let's see some examples. Let's discover some examples. So let's check here. So observe one is going to two. And if you do f of f of, so if you do f of f of one, f of f of one, you get what? You get f of two and f of two is equal to one. So you get f of is equal to one. So f of f of one is equal to one. So this is not a permutation. So what can be such a permutation? One permutation can be one goes to two. Let's try it out. One such permutation may one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to four, four goes to five, five goes to six, and six goes to one. That means observe that f of one is two and f of two is three. So it's not never gonna happen, right? So it's beautiful. So this one such example, another example. Let's say one is going to two, two is going to three, three is going to one, four is going to five, five is going to six, and six is going to four. So observe f of one, f of f of one is f of two is f of two is f of three, then f of two is three. So therefore f of f of one is three. You can easily observe that for any one of them, it should be 
I mean, it is not equal to I. So these are one, such, one and two, two such examples. So essentially it's asking how many such examples, how many such uh, permutations are there? That's the question. Now, observe one real thing. Observe that I will state a result that, you know, if you see this, you know, if you observe this here, it's going to one is going to two, two is going to three, and three is again going to one. Here, four is going to five, five is going to six, and six is going to four. Similarly, so here, it's nothing but one is going to two, two is going to three, three is going to four, four is going to five, and five is going to six, and six is going to one. So it's like a cycle out here. It's a cycle. Let's check out if there's a cycle over here. Yes. So one is going to two and two is going to one. Three is going to four, four, three is going to five, five is going to six, six is going to four, and four is going to three. So it's a cycle. So the result is this, that the fundamental result is this, that any permutation can be written as you know as cycles part by part cycles So if you go to the previous one, here the number one example, although it's not such an example like which follows the uh, this condition, but this example, this permutation can be written as. So this one can be written as one two psi one and two ka cycle, and then three five six four ka cycle. This one can be written as. One, two, three, four, five, six ka cycle. This one can be written as one, two, three, and four, five, six ka cycle. So you observe that any permutation written as such cycles, like part by part cycles. So let's check. So let's say such a permutation, whatever permutation you have. Like consider the case that f of f of i is not equal to i. Let's take a permutation. Now let's observe that if you have a one cycle, that means one cycle means what? f of a is equal to a. That means f of f of a is equal to also a. So it's not possible. If you take a two cycle, a b, that means a goes to b, f of a is equal to b, and f of b is equal to a. A goes to b, b goes to a. Observe that f of f of a therefore is also equal to a. This is also not possible. But if you take a three cycle, f of a is equal to b, f of b is equal to c, and f of c is equal to a, you will see that f of f of a and similarly f of f of x is not equal to x. So that's done. So in fact, any permutation, if it contains, two or one cycle, then it's not possible, right? So therefore, the question boils down to how many permutations one can make with cycle lengths greater than or equal to three. If you have small cycle lengths like one and two, it's turning out it's uh, um, it's actually not following this condition, not satisfying this condition. So we need permutations with cycle length more than three, greater than or equal to three, more than two. So let's find out that. So observe if the uh, the number of elements are one, two, three, four, five, six. So with three or more higher, if you have a four length permutation, A, B, C, D, E, the, using the other two length, you, they, it's a permutation among itself and it will contain a two or one smaller cycle length, right? 
so it's not possible a four length permutation can also not exist right because two and smaller is not existing because it's dividing into the rest of the things so for example 1 2 3 4 and the you will be left with 5 and 6 5 and 6 and with either 5 goes to 5 or 6 goes to 6 or 5 goes to 6 and 6 goes to 5 so therefore it's not possible right because we cannot allow two or one or one or two length cycles so therefore greater than equal to four length cycles are also not possible because the complementary part will contain two or one length cycle so therefore the only possibilities are The entire thing one is going to two is two is going to three three is going to four and four is going to five five is going to six like it's a six length cycle A B C D E F six length or three three length cycle A B C and D E F imagine you want to extend this problem to n. Then you have to do it like this way. How many length cycles are possible? So therefore, observe that. Let's count how many cycle lengths are possible. Observe it's nothing but one cycle length. Counting the number of cycle lengths is nothing but a cyclical permutation. What cycle is permutation? It's number of ways of arranging one, two, three, four, five, six here. So the number of ways of arranging one, two, three, four, five, six is six factorial. But observe that this arrangement and this arrangement are equivalent because it is in cyclical format. So there are n such identical arrangement for each such number, each such you know, each such arrangement. There are n such cyclical arrangements. So it's not n factorial, but it's n by n factorial by n because for each such arrangement we get n such cyclical permutation. It's over counting. It's n minus one factorial there for number of cyclical permutations. So here it should be five factorial. That is one twenty for the six length cycle. But what about three three length cycle? For that I need to work a bit harder. Observe that first you have to select which are the two like which what is A B C. For that choose A B C. Choose the set ABC and permute. So once you choose ABC, automatically CDG EDF is chosen. Okay. So for the choosing purpose, you need six choose three. Now after choosing, let's say you've chosen ABC to be one, two, three, and this four, five, six. After choosing that, you can you arrange this and arrange this. So it's Cyclical arrangement, so it's two factorial times two factorial. But there is a small catch. The small catch is that imagine you choose A B C first and then D E F, and imagine you choose D E F first and A B C then. The permutation is remaining same. In this, you are counting these two as distinct. One, two, three permutation. Uh, is kapa cycle. And this cycle is you are considering it actually distinct, but essentially they are the same. The permutation, permutation is same. So we are counting every such you know they are clubbing together to be one. So we are over counting. So we have to divide it by two to consider not over counting. So this term gets out to be this twenty into two into two by two that is forty. So we therefore total get one twenty plus forty. That is the 160 is the solution number of such permutation. This is a beautiful problem. You can extend this idea. Maybe it's not possible to for you can compute easily because there are partitions involved. So you can make computer write this program to find all such cases. But it's a beautiful problem. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you learn this idea of how to like any permutation can be written as composition of cycles, part step by step cycles of other numbers, say a subset of numbers. Hope you enjoyed this. It's a part of a classical probability and uh, combinatorics course, and I hope you um, are preparing well for exams. And if you're looking for any courses to help you boost your preparation, you can check out our course in the given description. All the best, guys! I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Have a great day. Bye.